Selling someone on command modern operations is the easiest thing in the world. I mean the absolute easiest thing in the world. It has databases and weapon systems going all the way back to early Cold War. So you can command A6 intruders, or you can use hypothetical units going beyond the F-22 and F-35. There's so much packed into command modern operations that it would take a full hour just to talk about the electronic warfare system or the logistics in the game. And those aren't even like the fun things that people want to hear about. I mean, we can talk about the F-22 taking on the J-20. We can talk about carrier launch platforms, precision guided artillery, high Mars, MLRSs, hyperglided weapon, weapon systems, pallet launch munitions with like 20 precision guided missile war missiles targeting a T-72 tank company at standoff range. We can talk about combined arms, AWACS jamming basic MiGs, F-22s conducting air-to-air -air combat, and doing air ambushes. The, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. And we're just talking about more modern things right there. We're not talking about early Cold War, late Cold War weapon systems. We're not talking about the 525 scenarios you can go to the workshop and download for absolutely free right now. And all you need to do is go over there, most subscribe, and just click on it. And you get once you buy this, you have 525 scenarios you can sort through from varying levels of complexity. People have written whole books about scenarios they've designed in Command Modern Operations. I mean, the game sells itself. What doesn't sell itself are the graphics. And I, I can't change the graphics. You can immerse yourself a bit if you get the bundle with the tack view. And we'll take a look at the tack view later on in this video when I pull up a few things. But where a lot of people make the mistake is misunderstanding what Command Modern Operation is. Because it is a simulator. But I would put it more in the level of hobbyist and not so much DCS. I'd even consider DCS kind of like a low-level hobby game. And I know a lot of people take it to like full hobby, but Command Modern Operations is up there with the hobby, like hobbyist simulators. Because, I mean, if we just want to understand fighters, you have the F-35, F-18, like different generations of those fighters. The F-16, they all have different payloads. We're talking JDAMs, air-to-air -air setups no air to air jamming and you just just start talking about all of these features and people's eyes start to glaze over so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a few things so we're going to take a look at start new game i have a few of the dlcs slytherin was kind enough to send me the ford class i believe is one of the first things they've sent me for command modern operations everything else i've purchased on my own so that desert storm dlc i believe i also own the silent service I spend, and where a lot of people are going to spend their time, in my opinion, is creating your own um, DLCs or your own scenarios or just testing the equipment, trying to figure out how they work. And I'll show that to you later on in the video as well. But I want to start with showing you like an extremely complex scenario. I think that's perfectly fair. Instead of showing you something that's like really basic and kind of like misinterpret, allowing you to misinterpret things, I think it's fair to show you something that's complex and kind of explain everything that's going on. We're not going to play through the whole scenario. We're mainly just going to talk about it. There's not going to be that much gameplay in this video. There's I have other gameplay videos where I launch javelins at T-72s or guide precision guided munitions on the T-72s and infantry companies. I have all kinds of videos. Check those out. I just really want to explain what this game is because there's so much to it, and even I don't understand a lot of it. So we just did a basic night strike mission in the Desert Storm DLC. I haven't played a lot of these. We're not going to play through this whole one. This one's extremely, extremely complicated. As you see, there's sand batteries. We have radars. And we have to conduct realistically like a joint strike combined arms mission where we're going to need to refuel our bombers. So our KC-135s or KC-1, not KC-130s, wow. KC-5s, I believe, or KC-10s, sorry, our KC-10s and our 135s, so our tankers are going to be refueling our B-52s when we launch those. Our B-52s are going to be flying, remember we're flying over whole countries right here, right? If we zoom out, this is an entire globe, and this is a 48-hour operation, so here's our date and time right here. So two days to go while we conduct this operation. Then throughout this operation, we also need to conduct a seed and dead mission, so suppression of enemy air defenses, or destruction of enemy air defenses. We have to con monitor when we're going to refuel things we also need to launch we have carrier launch platforms down here so here's our strike our naval strike force down here in this corner currently what sea is that i apologize i'm not going to just guess um so we have surface groups down here that have aircraft carriers that are going to be launching f-18 or f-18s or any sort of naval fighter and those are going to conduct a lot of our suppression of enemy air defenses so we need to coordinate refueling for them we also need to coordinate 
their speed as well, right? Could be because we have um, B-52s and KC-135s that may fly at a higher altitude, so they may either get to the location faster, but we need to have the F-18s in area to destroy the enemy air defenses. And then we also need to make sure they're able to refuel once those enemy air defenses are destroyed. Once everything's done, they could possibly guide us through over Iraq while we drop bombs on all of these high value targets. So we're basically just dropping all kinds of munitions on Iraq in an extremely complex, high level manner. And so I really want people to like understand that. So when they take a look at command modern operations, they get a full picture of everything that's going on. And like I said, this is one of the more extremely complex scenarios. It's also one of the more fun ones, in my opinion. Personally, I enjoy the ground combat, which the ground combat currently leaves a lot to be desired. But they're working on that, and we're going to get updates to that later on. So if we go back over here, and we go back to the start menu, and we go to start new game, the tutorials, right, it goes air warfare where you can practice your jamming and have your F-22s shoot down a bunch of MiGs that are flying into you. Um, a lot of the standalone scenarios, there's a few really basic ones, and I really wish they would model a bunch of more scenarios after these, like, Battle of Latakia. Instead of creating these really extremely complex scenarios, that's just something I want from the developers in the future. Is I think this is where a lot of the fun is, and that's where you onboard a lot of your new players. So I would like to see a lot of scenarios modeled off of this fashion. I mean, you can even include complex weapon systems under these very basic scenarios, right? You don't need to have the seed, the dead, the refueling. You're gonna have, all right, we have a two su surface groups engaging two other surface groups. And a lot of like my own created scenarios like in like Ukraine are just really basic. We just launch a few Javelin missiles, pull out, try and ensure our units don't get destroyed, launch some high Mars and kind of just tell a bit of a story and not so much worrying so much about all the mechanics that are involved in the game. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but let me know down in the comments. And as always, if you enjoy military strategy, tactics, and doctrine, and like seeing apply to strategy games, this is the right channel for you. So subscribe, hit that bell, turn on all notifications. And so in this scenario, we're just going to take a look at it. This is an extremely, extremely basic one. All you do is you have like three surface groups, and they just launch precision guided munitions at a bunch of Iranians who are off their own coast. Extremely basic. You get to have some fun. Nothing's overly complicated. Now let's kind of move into talking about what the game is or what it could be or what the possibilities are. Let's just talk about the mission editor because this is where a lot of players are going to spend their time. One, they're going to find their way here because, I mean, there's so much in the game. Two, the complexity of command modern operations kind of pushes people this direction, um, in my opinion. Even though there's like a lot, like the developers put a lot of work into the scenarios, a lot of people do. It's really, the game struggles at onboarding those new people, in my opinion. I mean, even myself. I, I mean, I only make videos on this because I, I have fun with the scenario editor. So if we go into UKR, we're just going to go right here, and I'm just going to show this off a little bit. So under, th under the scenario editor, here we have, just to showcase everything, we have a few MiGs doing patrols. The mission, the point of these MiGs was to try and get them to use some JDAMs, to launch some JDAMs at some Russian targets. But um, I couldn't quite get the JDAMs to work. I think I did a bug report for it. And then we have, and I think I'm using them wrong too, um, a T-72. And all of this is just extremely basic, right? We have 105 mechanized infantry platoons up here, Ukrainian infantry with in-laws. We have our artillery batteries, towed howitzers, and those are armed with precision-guided Excalibur rounds as well as high explosives. We also, if we zoom way far out, and go down, oh no, I got rid of it. I had a Reaper drone patrolling the Black Sea at one point that was intercepted by two Su-27s. And, and this is just stuff I wanna create, right? I mean, you can load up a different database, so what we're going to do is we're gonna do that. We can go over here to this database and go to this version, that's our current version, but we can go all the way to the Cold War version 499. I hit the wrong one, cancel. And we're like, I'm just gonna showcase a few things under version 499. We're going to bounce back and forth between the two databases so you can see what's going on. We're going to go editor. We're going to add a unit side and we're just going to call it US. And then what we're going to do is it's going to add. We're going to hit X. We're just going to find ourselves, let's say, over in Korea or even Vietnam. Vietnam, can I find you? Right here. 
So here we are, Vietnam, Cambodia, and we want to create a small little scenario in Vietnam in the Cold War, right? So we hit the insert button, and then it brings up our database. And this is all early Cold War. We have the A-10, A-26, Skyhawks, intruders, Corsairs, and this is just aircraft. Now we're just scrolling the database to show all the features that are currently in. The B-36, B-25, this isn't even naval vessels, right? The Bells, helicopters, C-70, CH Chinooks, Bells, 47s, Apaches. I mean, the, I don't think the Apache was Cold War. Endless, absolutely endless. The F-100, like look at this, Super Saber, I believe. Oh, that's so cool. Do we have the F-86? We can go into Korea, like early Cold War with the F-86 and just do like um, massive, just like long range going too far across, what is it, par parallel 48 or something. So we have the F-86 Super Saber and obviously we could um, narrow this down a little bit and it takes some time. Sometimes images don't load all the way, but it tells you all the weapon systems they have and we go, okay, we want the Super Saber, close that. Hit OK. I don't think the Super Saver did nothing in, um, what is this? Um, Vietnam. We have napalm, Zuni rockets, more napalm, long range napalm, which means it's more than likely going to have gas on it. It tells you 200 feet AGL. Internal guns, so our 350 cals, 650 cals. And then strategic bombs. I'm surprised we don't have our air to air. Maybe we picked the wrong. Maybe that's the HVR rockets. Those are look like just 820, 827 millimeters. So this is everything it comes with. DCS doesn't really model that that well, the F-86 with all these varying things. So if we were to like manually engage a target or whatever, or just take a look at the weapon systems, here's all the weapon systems we have. 20 millimeter gun, M24. We have Zuni's rockets. And this is just an extremely, extremely basic loadout. We're not even talking like throttle, altitude. You can take vehicle weapon systems all the way up to max, 36,000 feet. We're not even like talking about like the drone weapon systems, the jamming, the surface the air weapon systems. I mean, there's so much and so many people have like so much knowledge in this game that when you try and include something, they'll like talk to you in the comments, tell you how you're using your electronic warfare, if it's correct, if it's not correct. And then we have our F-86 down here in Vietnam when in reality he should be over here in Korea. Look at my geography right now. So we move him over to Korea, and then we can have him face off against the MiG farmer or anything like that as he goes over into North Vietnam. And then we could actually hit insert once more since we're in the Cold War database. Here's all our options, surface ships, submarines, facilities. If you're reading um, The Hunt for the Red October, definitely pick up The Silent Service because it's so much fun to like read that book and play The Silent Service DLC, even though it's postmodern or modern. Um, it's still fun to talk about. So if we just wanted like surface ships and we wanted to coordinate this down to the United States, we can do that as well. And we can just see all the different types of um, ships. We have cruisers, um, carriers. I don't think there are any battleships, destroyers, all kinds of things. You can re go to Vietnam, recreate your Gulf of Token incident where you just shoot into the dark and then lie about people being there if that's your opinion on it or the historical facts cv 76 cannot put a ship over land thanks guys for letting me put ships on land and then we could just go facility and put like a triple a battery if that's uh, what we wanted to do u.s air force boom and now we have some anti-air right there and that's not even talking about now we need to set this weapon system up so we go to sensors and here's all the sensors that are currently on this weapon system. We have radars, we have sonar, we have rep weapon release operation, we have comms, and then you have all these air sea warfare, air ops, and just the list goes on and on and on and on. All of that's not super important, in my opinion. You can I kind of wish there was like a default we could set that to. And then sensors, and this is just Cold War stuff, right? If we go back all the way to like modern, current, we go to like the latest. Everything goes away and we just, we have to add another side. I, I guess it doesn't save sides, add US. Okay, close. And I think this is where a lot of people are going to show spend most of their time. That's why I'm spending most of my time on it. Hit that insert button, United States. And then now we have all our aircraft coming back. 2000s, 2003s. 23s, hypotheticals, JDAMs, F-15s, F-16s, Chinooks, Apaches. I don't think we have our Super Sabres anymore, anything like that. 
and that's just like our fighters, right? And then now you need to master all the, let's say we pull up our, let's just grab the F-35. And if you want to use the F-35, get the new Ford class DLC. Look, I don't even know what half those acronyms mean, JSAL. And now you have your F-35 operating over South Korea. So now you can create some tense modern South Korean op or operations going on in South Korea. And like I said, a lot of people focus on going overly complicated. You can just create real small operations, right? I mean, not everything needs to be this massive um, 18, like 35 fighters launch, all right? It can just be like a real small, I mean, they launched what, like a few F-22s at the space balloon over the U.S., and I'm sure they were jamming it in a lot of other weapon systems, but a lot of that we don't know. What I would really like to see is I wonder if we could like set IEDs up. I don't think there's IEDs in this game. Go to Afghanistan and see if we can like, if there's enough electronic countermeasures to set them off for like pressure plates. Maybe we could just fly as fast as we can at the speed of, speed of sound and our son sonic boom would set off a bunch of pressure plates. That's not something that's in this game. All right, last thing we need to talk about, though we're going back to our F-35, is our 3D view. So what that's going to pull up our TAC view. This is something you had to buy differently. And I generally use this when I make videos. Sometimes I forget. And it's it's because we have it's like this because we haven't plotted a course for it yet. So if we come back over here and we plot a course, it will correct itself, but everything spawns in with tack view like that. Doesn't matter the game, that's not a bug. Hit escape, hit play, and it straightens out and starts flying. And now we have an F-35 flying at, I believe, going 480 knots, and he's currently trying to get to 36,000 feet, or operating at that height. So I don't really know what the point of this video was other than to tell you about Command Modern Operations. Um, if it was a waste of your time, I apologize, but there's just so much gameplay on the game. I didn't really want to talk about gameplay. That doesn't really sell the, the game for me, in my opinion. It's all the mechanics in the game that really sell it. It's the editor, it's the community support, it's the developer. And so when I just load up like, oh, let's load up and watch someone play the battle of whatever, I'm just like, my eyes glaze over when that's not really what the game is to a lot of people. It's m mainly like an enthusiast level editor. Um, they can play a lot of fun little scenarios. They can create their own scenarios and a lot of people are going to find their way into this editor. And so that's what I wanted to showcase. I didn't really want to talk too much about the complexity even though I harped on that a bit. And it's just meant to be like, this is what this game is. And I don't even feel like this video does it justice because there's we, can, we haven't even touched on really anything. We haven't touched on how to use carrier platforms. We haven't touched on the strategies in those carrier platforms. We haven't touched on how to use palletized, palletized munitions. We haven't touched on the artillery. We haven't touched on anti-aircraft, all the anti-aircraft weapon systems. We haven't even talked about logistics. I mean, there's just like, I mean, you could just create humanitarian scenarios. You can go off to the coast of a molly right where there was a cyclone and just offload a bunch of civilian personnel you're like okay well i don't i don't want to do war joe i just want to like simulate where i don't know where molly's at right here molly i just want to have a like a carrier like a a humanitarian mission and i want to evacuate people from pemba so i know there was a cyclone in this general vicinity not everything needs to be kinetic war and explosions i mean we can go over to cuba and do 2005 hurricane katrina where we just need to coordinate airlift for all kinds of evacuees. So if we come, not Cuba, um, Haiti. Down here in Haiti, and we just go up, we put like a bunch of PJs down here, we set up a fun little airfield, and we just move people as if they were logistics, right? We have so many people, we need to set up field hospitals, we need to offload them, we can pick them up from helicopters in these mountains, we can bring them to an airfield, we can transfer them to a C-17, and we can bring them to the U.S., right? And we can just overall, like, there's more than just kinetic warfare to this game. Or if you just want to blow things up and drop napalm, that's an option, too. I mean, you can shoot the balloon with an F-22. It's just endless, right? Endless, endless. We can come down here to Mexico City and just put some helos up and maybe a few aircraft and simulate hunting the cartel. I mean, not everything is um, World War Three. is all I'm trying to say. I'm Venezuela, Brazil... Um, we can just do inter interdiction missions. We can have a bomber get intercepted by Su-27s, F-35s, F-22s, and we just guide them out of our airspace. All right, guys. And then you could go to Af Africa, and you have a uh, palletized munitions launched with some AC-130s or some C-17s, 
and we could just blow up some enemy technicals down here in the heart of Africa because this AOR is so big that helos don't function well on it. Something to think about as well. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I hope this video was not super pointless. Peace.